These are pictures taken by a Swedish tourist in Thailand a few years ago. But what's that in the background? It turns out those are people. Tightly shoved together, guarded by Thai military with machine guns. Ninety stranded refugees have been forced ashore on idyllic Similan Island. They're trussed up like cattle. The sun is brutal. Many tourists are indifferent. Similan is not far from popular tourist resorts such as Kaulak and Phuket. And from Phuket, we travel to the southern provinces near Malaysia. Recently, extensive human trafficking connected to the refugee boats has been uncovered in the area. My guide is Chutima Sida Satyan, a Thai reporter who's been investigating the abuse. It turns out that most of the boats belong to the Rohingya people, stateless Muslims from Rakhine province in Burma. The way to democracy in Burma has been beset by explosive ethnic conflicts. In 2012, Buddhist fundamentalists torched houses belonging to Rohingyas. 140,000 were forced into huge camps. Now, many Rohingyas sell everything they've got and flee in unseaworthy boats to Malaysia, a Muslim country discreetly accepting them. But on their way through Thai waters, many end up in the hands of human traffickers, sometimes, allegedly, with the assistance of elements within the police and military. The refugees are then held captive in camps in the jungle. From there, they're allowed to call relatives in Malaysia or Thailand for money to buy their freedom. If unsuccessful, the refugees might face slave labor on Thai fishing ships or rubber plantations. In a mosque situated in a tiny village, we meet Rohingyas who've managed to escape. Mohammed tells about the horrible conditions in his camp and the many deaths there. Um, they, he says he stayed like this in the camp for three months and he, uh, he could force himself to move. Mm. They were forced to sit with legs crossed or lie in the fetal position. If they tried to stretch, they'd get hit. After a few months, their leg muscles atrophied and they could neither walk nor escape. The guard's job was made easier if the prisoners couldn't stand. They show us where they were hit. They have a hard time getting to the mosque to pray. Leg muscles heal slowly. We continue and meet a Thai family brave enough to hide refugees. So about 40 uh, of the Rohingya we kept inside like this. He said his house been burned and then he only one child of the family. He, he, he left his hometown for nearly four months already. But our presence causes concern. The broker is just out there. Just the next, no next problem, door. No so he should, he should not see us? Well, we just try hide ourselves as, as we can. This is a Rohingya family with permanent residency in Thailand. Durman had to borrow money to pay the human traffickers keeping his cousin captive. In the middle of our conversation, the phone rings. Hello, assalamu alaikum. It's the broker again. Another relative is being held captive in the jungle. His freedom costs 60,000 baht, or 2,000 US dollars. But Durman has no money to transfer to the account number he's just received by text. 
60,000 baht. He not have money. My heart is broken when I saw his tear and then he start crying and what? The problem still happen and worse and worse day by day. Nobody cares. Chutima searches for evidence in an abandoned camp in the jungle. She wants to reveal the extent of the human trafficking. And she wants to know if and how the Thai police and military are involved. By this, she's challenging powerful interests. I don't mind to be in jail, you know, if I can save another life and then make other people get a good condition and then more people care. What's your response, sir, to allegations that Thai officials have been involved in trafficking? You know, I heard that uh, there are some officials get involved with this. So I, I myself seriously investigate this issue too. But I still um, don't have any evidence yet, cannot say anything. Finally, we meet Rohingyas who have been in internment camps and freed by the police, only to end up in an immigration authority cell. From one hell to another, neither Burma nor Thailand wants anything to do with them. When they're deported, it's not unlikely that they'll end up in the hands of human traffickers again. Recycling of refugees is not uncommon. We leave the cell as the next truckload of Rohingyas is on its way in. The tragedy seems to be never-ending. <laughs>